Welcome, welcome to another episode of Edible RX. I'm Laura Rodriguez, holistic chef, autoimmune warrior, and backyard farmer. And this is the podcast that teaches you to use anti inflammatory food as medicine. Today on the podcast, I have Kirsty Washam. She is a local pharmacist from Bowling Green, Kentucky. She is the fed up pharmacist on Instagram. And we are talking all about her journey with autoimmunity her journey with using food as medicine, her journey with Hashimoto's today, how she came to embrace the flare-free lifestyle and achieve true food freedom. And I cannot tell you, I'm smiling ear to ear. This conversation is incredible. So let's just go ahead and get into it. All right, hi, Kirsty. I'm so glad that you're here with me today. Um, I love what you do, but I have to say, before we get into it, I don't really know very much about your personal story. I'm just very like, um, what's the word? Um, I'm just a huge fan of yours. I think that you have a very interesting story. So you are a pharmacist, but you also use food as medicine and you kind of have a little bit of, um, maybe, some beef with maybe um, the overuse of um, pharmaceutical medications. Would you say that that's right? That would be correct. Yes. Okay. (laughs) So your handle on Instagram is the fed up pharmacist. And I think that really kind of tells you what you're all about, but I would love for you to tell us more in depth, first of all, like who you are, where you're from, where you live now, and then we'll get into your journey of um, becoming a pharmaceutical doctor and Hashimoto's and all of the things. So go ahead. Tell us about yourself. Okay, well, thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. Um, so yeah, so I'm the fed up pharmacist. I wasn't always this way. So we'll start back. i born and raised in Kentucky, live in Bowling Green, Kentucky now. So just right up the road from you, fortunately. So I can attend, yes. I can attend your events. Um, I graduated pharmacy school in 2014. And around that time started having just some lingering health issues. So I was having a lot of anxiety, a lot of depression. Of course, you know, being a soon to be pharmacist, I went to see my primary care provider and he said, oh, you know, you're just really stressed. So let's start you on some anti-anxiety medication. So benzodiazepine, so anti-anxiety medication, I start you on an SSRI. So I was put on, I believe it was alprazolam and citalopram right before I graduated pharmacy school. So I was tired. I was constipated. My hair was falling out. I had all these things going on and all my lab work was normal. Okay. All like the only answer I got when I went to the doctor was, and this so many women say this, right. Is that, oh, they just told me I'm stressed and I'm fine. So I continued on like that for a while. And then I realized this is not working. Like what, there's got to be something else I can do. Medication's not fixing this. Um, so I started investigating the more holistic route. Uh, I was fortunate that my path crossed with another pharmacist and a functional medicine physician who actually ran the appropriate thyroid lab work and diagnosed me, I believe in 2016 was my official diagnosis for Hashimoto's. And looking back, I had probably had Hashimoto's for years and years prior that just was overlooked. Wow. Yeah. And yeah. So you had kind of the classic signs of Hashimoto's just listing your signs right there. It's like, to me, I'm like, okay, obviously. Yeah. Um, but then you also had the classic diagno- diagnosis, which is, oh, you're just stressed or, you know, you need to work less or you need to sleep more, take right. these SSRIs or whatever. Yeah. I mean, I was 28, 29 at the time. And that completely abnormal, right? Like right. you should be in the prime of your life and have no problems. I had no problems. <laughs> yeah. But but as you and I both know, because we're in this space and we're in this world, it's not that uncommon that younger and younger people are having issues. Right. And I feel like that's really where like your platform and mine, like we are in such a great place where we can like reach out to these younger women and say, this is not normal. You don't have to live the rest of your life like this. Like you need to be thriving through these parts of your life and not just barely struggling to get by. Right. I'm, I'm, I feel horrible that you had to go two years after, like you had said, after probably several years of already being sick and the symptoms slowly building, but you had that two year period of the initial diagnosis of, or 
was it anxiety or depression? I'm sorry, what you had said. It was mostly, it was mostly anxiety. Anxiety. They, they left um, depression in there with it. <laughs> sure. But then not, not having really treated the root cause. So two, two years, because once you get to the point where you're like, okay, I need to go to the doctor and see what's going on. Something's not normal. That's when the shit has hit the fan. So like you were really sick at that point. So you had to live in that for two years. And so I'm curious, like how your paths crossed with that other person, like what was the light bulb that went off that said, I want to try to treat the root cause because medication is just not really helping. Right. So around, so during that two year period of time, when I was really struggling, I was working as a retail pharmacist and that's when I really started to kind of open my mind to I'm filling these prescriptions for these people every single month, right? Like their blood pressure medicine, their cholesterol medicine. And they have to keep coming back Mm. every month because they're not getting never getting better. They're never getting better. Right. So they're never getting off of this stuff. If anything, they're getting more and more prescriptions. And that's something that I really speak out on. So I, the, at one point in my career, I think the patient I had with the most prescription medications was 38 medicines a month. Wow. 38 prescription medicines a month. So I didn't want to be that person, but that's the path that people with autoimmunity, right. Are headed down. If Mm -hmm. we don't course correct with things that you and I know work. So I had started to kind of investigate food at that point. I had gone just Um, Mm gluten-free and that helped significantly. Mm -hmm. Um, but then in 2016, I met another, I met the functional pharmacist and it's just like this, I was already open. So I feel like when the student's ready, the teacher appears, you know, Mm -hmm. uh, like the world is just conspiring to help you. And so I met her and then this whole new world just opened and I realized how important sleep and supplementation. I started reading Mm. these books. You can't see them, but I have (laughs) a whole like library of books. So I really just applied what I knew from pharmacy school. It really gave me a great platform. So I don't dislike being a pharmacist because it gave me a great basis on which to build the knowledge that I currently have. Mm -hmm. And that is there is a place for medications, but chronic illness is not it. Acutely, right. acutely. So what I do now is I do work in patient in a hospital. I'm a clinical pharmacist, but so acutely medications work well. We save lives every single day and it's phenomenal. You have an infection, you need antibiotics. You yes. Have- you had a stroke, you had a heart attack. Exactly. <clears throat> Medical right. intervention is fantastic. It saves lives every day. Yeah. It saves lives every single day, but it is not for like rheumatoid arthritis, for lupus, for Hashimoto's. It's not it. It's not the answer. Not, it's not the cure. It's not the cure. And so I did a round of the whole 30, I think it was 2016. And so I did my first like eliminate my true elimination diet and my thyroid antibodies decreased by 50%. Wow. And that was the moment I was like, this shit works. <laughs> this shit works. <laughs> like there's no, there's no medication that could do that for a Hashimoto's patient. Like you're the answer, the personal answer to Hashimoto's is thyroid supplementation. Well, I was never truly hypothyroid. Mm, Okay. Wow. Um, That came later. So I do, I do supplement now, um, use thyroid medication now just to kind of suppress my TSH. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it seems to keep things under control, but levothyroxine Synthroid is not going to decrease your inflammation. Right. Right. So, so I want to I wanted to know. say like this is why I was really excited to get you on the podcast because Hashimoto's is the number one diagnosis that my clients have. It's the most common amongst my listeners and my my clients, and I just know that they're going to love the message of hearing um, how you were like you know how you said earlier like you're not alone, you're not crazy, this is not normal. That message you can't say it enough because there's always going to be somebody new that is, is in that position where you were, where you're like, I'm constipated. I have, my hair is falling out. I have anxiety and doesn't know what is going on. And they feel like they're crazy because their doctor dismisses them. So I love that you shared that story. I think it's really going to help a lot of people, but I'm curious. One of the things that I don't, I haven't had a Hashimoto's warrior on here to talk about is like, when you first started changing your diet and you said you took out gluten first and that really helped. And then you did whole 30 because that really cuts out all the inflammatory foods. So you really dropped your inflammation drastically. 
But what are some of the symptoms? I think this will really help some people that you can notice in your body when you do, like say you did eat gluten after not having it for a while and you decided to have a donut or some fried chicken, or maybe you ate a bunch of dairy or whatever your triggers are. What were some of the symptoms that you would feel after reintroducing those inflammatory foods after having taken them out for a while? So I've actually not intentionally had gluten since then. Wow. Like there's, it's a possibility that I've come across it. I'm sure, sure. I have. Um, I don't tend to, I'm not highly reactive actually okay. to gluten okay. um, and I tolerate dairy reasonably well mm-hmm. and eggs okay. will, will tear me up. So, okay. uh, it, so we just have to be real with people. So it's not mm. mucusy, like at the, mostly like, like a histaminergic type reaction. Okay. Now, mm-hmm. if I do eat a lot of dairy, I will notice like some joint pain, okay. like that sugar also mm, is, a yeah. big, is a big one for me. So, yeah. you know, I enjoy a treat here and there, but I notice if I go off the rails too much and indulge that I do those joint pains and aches kind of like will sneak back in. Mm-hmm. And I think that's important too, for people to realize, and I think you and I see eye to eye on this is that there's a time and a place, right? For I lived really, really strict elimination diet for an extensive period of time. Okay. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But then you have to eventually loosen. Like I realized like at some point I wasn't getting better beyond that. Right. 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 Like becoming more and more and more restrictive was not the answer. And Mm -hmm. so eventually I think it's good to like branch out and test kind of your ability. Cause that's the, that's the beauty of this lifestyle is that you've decreased your inflammation. So if you have either an unintentional or an intentional exposure, mm-hmm. you can handle that. Like you've built your right. resilience, you know, and you I, can notice, you can notice relatively quickly. So you're like, okay, I can't have that again, or I can't have that much, or, you know, I'm going to go back to not having that for a while. You know what I exactly, mean? Exactly. Exactly. It really helps you to figure out like how much you can have. It's like, I talk about folks doing flare-free math, meaning yes. how much of this can I have? Like you can say, I can tolerate dairy to a certain point. Like I can't, have, I can't have cheese on everything three times a day. I certainly can't drink it in my tea. Like, you know, it's just certain things for me and everybody's going to be different, but that's so insightful. Yeah. It's really important. I think because, you know, people who are, are new to this and they're, they're so sick, they don't feel good. They want to do everything right. Well, that's a lot of pressure too. And that's a lot of right. stress. Right. When you're eating something where you're like, like it could go both ways where it's like, you're, you're constantly obsessing about eating the right foods and you're over restricting, you're putting stress on your body, which causes that inflammation, you know, to go through the roof. And then also if you decide to indulge and you're like, I'm going to have a cauliflower crust pizza with real cheese on it, you know, and, um, and, and stressing out about that, like instantly afterwards being like, oh, I shouldn't have eaten that and, and berating yourself for that. That's going to cause inflammation as well. So there's a lot that goes into it. There is. And you know, for people with Hashimoto's, most likely stress is one of the triggers, right? Mm-hmm. That, that got us mm-hmm. here. So I know without a doubt that <clears throat> most of us can look back and see a stressful event in our life. And then most of us got sick after that. So for Absolutely. me, for me, that was, it was pharmacy school. Like it was the stress of pharmacy school. Like my body sustained me through that, but mm. literally, literally right as it was ending is when like the wheels fell off. Mm. So it's amazing yeah. just how, you know, how much wisdom we have in our bodies. So, yeah. but food, my gosh, I mean, I can't think of any other, you know, treatment modality that we all have to have food. We all have to eat. Right. So you could be intentional with it. Um, you're eating multiple times a day. I mean, it doesn't cost you extra money. So it's another thing, you know, when you get into autoimmunity, it's easy to get sucked down the rabbit hole of, I've, I don't know, all the wonderful things, the biohacking, right? The IV treatments yeah. and the red yeah. light therapies and mm-hmm. yada, 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 but it's expensive. Right. Yeah. The food, the food is food and you're going to eat it. So. Yeah. I mean, the difference, especially um, that's one of the things I always tell people is like, if you look at the price difference between an organic, whatever bell pepper and a regular bell pepper, they're not in the grand scheme of things that much more expensive. And so like, there's little things that you can do. And also it's like, 
if something is more expensive, like say, for example, you're like, I'm going to buy the vegan feta and it's like $6 a block, which by the way, can you get regular feta for less than $6 a block? Like you can't. Right. So like to me, if something is more expensive and you feel like that's going to prohibit you from trying to use it as medicine, then just eat less of that expensive ingredient. Like you know, quinoa, rice, vegetables, some, a little bit of organic meat, that's gonna, that's gonna, you're gonna be able to eat on that for very little. Well, and you're not eating out. Like that's, right. what, that's, right. also, that's something for me. I think you and I've discussed this. I don't enjoy eating out as much anymore because yeah. I don't find that the food is as good Yeah, because it's not organic, right? It's not grass fed meat. So once your palate becomes accustomed to really high quality food, it's difficult to go out to a place where they're not preparing it, you know, like they're not literally like the lowest quality, the cheapest food they can buy. It's cooked in the crappiest oil. And it's just, yeah, you're totally right. It's not the same. It's like a good, fresh, home cooked meal that's like, flavorful and you know really good quality ingredients it's it's lighter you feel great afterwards you can eat a second plate and not be falling asleep and having to unbutton your you know and this is this is going to vary for a lot of people like if you have a sensitivity to something that you don't know about and you're eating it still you're going to get bloated and you're going to have a reaction so you know what we're saying is in general you should be able to eat at home and feel better and the food's going to taste better. Yeah. And especially when you're early on, you know, in your healing journey, not that you, there were plenty of times, and this is not to promote, you know, orthorexic behavior or whatever. Sure. There are plenty of times where even to this day, if I know there's not going to be like, and not to call food good or bad or whatever, but if I know sure. there's some, they're not serving food that I know is going to serve me mm-hmm. at an event. I have no shame in mm-hmm. eating before I go. Yes. Mm-hmm. Uh, bringing food with me in my purse. Like I'm the queen of busting like a meat stick and <laughs> some fruit out of my handbag and just, and just eating that. And so I think for women, especially because we're so concerned with like propriety, right? Like you need to be nice and you need to be polite well, sometimes on this journey, you've got to put some firm boundaries in place and you may not. That type of behavior will just keep you sick. It will just keep you sick. And you've got to stand firm. I mean, at work all the time, you know, I tell them I'm not being rude. Like if you bring cake or you bring pie, please don't be offended. And there's no judgment. I'm not going to sit there and think, oh, they're eating cake. No, I don't care. I honestly, there is no, I don't come from a place of judgment. And I think people do. People do feel like that, right? They're like, oh, she's judging me for eating this. No, I'm really not. It's just, I know that doesn't work for me and it's not worth it for me to sacrifice my health for this thing. So this conversation is one that I have a lot of passion about because there is so much information on the internet about disordered eating and, you know, um, what do they call it? Um, is it called mindful eating or what is it called when you intuitive eating, right? Yeah, mm-hmm. So we talk a lot about disorder eating and, and to combat that, we try to press people to be intuitive eaters. So just eat the cupcake, just eat the donut, right? If you have an eating disorder, I 100% agree with you. Fine, do that. But if you have an autoimmune condition, that system just doesn't work for you. And so what you have to do in the beginning is eat it know that you may have a flare up and don't beat yourself up over that flare up if you do, because what that does is that flare is actual data for you to take in and go, okay, number one, I know what my triggers are. Number one, I know how much I can have of it, but also now I have this like makes me so emotional. I'm sorry if I cry, but now I have the motivation to continue on the path that I've chosen for myself because I feel like I'm valuable enough to live a a pain-free, happy, long, you know, healthy life. Right. Right. And, you know, how can we be of service to those around us if we're not our best? Right. Right. And how many women, you know, I mean, it's the majority of us are females, right. That struggle Mm -hmm. with these types Mm -hmm. of things. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's statistics. Statistics are autoimmunity, you know, primarily like 80% women or something, right? 
Right. And most of us in the prime of our lives, like where you're raising children, where you have your career and you should be just vibrant and full of life and full of energy and not having it sucked out of you by autonomic fatigue, digestive issues. Like you said, my hair is falling out. All of the things, all of that stuff only adds to our already long laundry list of like burdenous things that we have to do, right? We have to take care of ourselves, our families, our career. We have to be like, we already have so much. Women have way more responsibilities than men. We take on more. And now we have to constantly be in pain and worrying about, oh, can I eat that while I'm at this party? Or am I going to end up in the bathroom? You know, whatever it is. Yeah. And, you know, I think too, it, sometimes it's more subtle than that. Like, mm-hmm. you know, headaches or maybe yeah. joint pain. And like we're talking about fatigue. That was a huge thing for me. Things that your physicians are dismissive of, but that you can address by yourself without a prescription with what you eat. Like you don't, need, you don't need a prescription for that. You don't need, you know, a $30,000 IV infusion for your autoimmune condition. If you could figure out what you're eating. And that's the beauty of it. And that's why I do what I do because I want people to be empowered. I want them to go, oh, okay. I know how to listen to my body and give it what it needs. I had, I, my hands were warm and tight after I had that chocolate shake. So it was either the dairy or the sugar or both. So next time, maybe I'll have I'll make my own sugar-free, dairy-free chocolate shake at home and see how I feel. See what happens. Yeah. Yeah. Because like you said, that's essentially free. The ingredients are going to cost the same as if you went out and bought a shake, but your hands aren't going to be swollen and hot. And, you know, I had this one time, I think it was last year for 4th of July or something. We bought a case of organic Michelob Ultra seltzer, spiked seltzer. And I drank like three of those and I could not use my hands the next day. And I, it remember, was like, I remember you talking about that. Yeah. yeah. And it's like, so why would I, why would I go from that? Why wouldn't I just go home and make my own? Or because th- the other thing is I could try another brand, but the same thing might happen. So all of these little cues that your body gives you based on what you eat is raw data that you have to, you know, if you physically have to write it down in your phone or take a note or something, so you can remember next time as you start eventually you'll be able to identify it very quickly and you'll, you'll know how to do it. You'll be like, okay, I can't have that. I'm going to try something else. Yeah. And for the most part too, I feel like the people who love you and care about you, you know, your spouse, your children want to see you well more than they want you to have a bite of pie or have a, you know, cake or whatever the case may be. Absolutely. The people who genuinely know you and genuinely have your best interest at heart are not going to be offended yeah (laughs) absolutely and um if they are then you need to you need to set a boundary around that because that person is not doesn't have your best interest at heart and that's just real talk there's like you had said earlier there's a lot of different things that can contribute to the onset of autoimmunity, whether it's stress or trauma or toxic overload or, you know, heavy metal toxicity or mold toxicity, all, and sometimes it's several of these things all at once, right? So as you're on your journey, you have to try to reverse each one of those things. And if that means literally physically removing toxic people from your life, hanging around them less, not going to the events where there is the pie. So you don't have to have that backlash of, oh, well, you don't want to eat my pie. You know what I mean? Yeah. Remember my dad said to me once, he's like, oh, you don't eat hot dogs anymore. Like it was this big thing. And I was like, no, I don't eat hot dogs anymore. Like, you know, we don't even have to have this discussion. Do you want some potato salad instead? Like there's other ways to go about it. Yeah. I think the beautiful thing, and I'm just now reflecting on this, is that while as hard as it is at the time, for, you know, your lifestyle to change or your friendships and relationships to change, this path that you've been put on for whatever reason that you're on is going to bring you into contact with so many beautiful people. Like if I didn't have Hashimoto's yeah. and I didn't eat flare free, yeah. would, I, would I have met you? You right. know, exactly. would I have been at a phenomenal dinner party that you threw uh, last fall with so many like-minded people? I mean... The, yes. com- the community that you're going to 
get as a result Mm -hmm. and create as a result of walking down this path is going to be so much more beautiful than any of that toxicity that you leave behind. Right. I want to touch on something that you had briefly mentioned. You had said um, orthorexia. So orthorexia is, it's, it's an eating disorder where you are very, like you're obsessed about eating healthy foods, right? You may be restricting things because you think it's not healthy. And um, there was a lot of debate on the internet recently when Gwyneth Paltrow was on Dr. Will Cole's podcast. Did you see that? I've seen little bits and pieces of it. Yeah. Okay. So she was on his podcast and you know how podcasts are. It's like snippets of things. So first of all, the snippets that he put in this Instagram reel were not the full context of the conversation, but she got ripped apart by people that are not in the autoimmune wellness community. And I don't think she has an autoimmune condition, but she did have mold toxicity, which she was being treated for by Dr. Will Cole. And she's been on her own wellness journey. And basically they like ripped her apart because she made it sound like she only drinks bone broth for lunch, which she said, I have bone broth a lot of times, which to me means I might have a cup of bone broth with my meal. Um, But that prompted me to have a very like open and honest discussion with a very well-respected chef friend of mine who's like, she's famous. And I just told her, I was like, equating orthorexia with folks that are on a wellness journey where eating certain things keep them well and make them better and actually reverse their disease is two different things. And you cannot equate them. And unless you understand what an autoimmune warrior is going through and how they've used food as medicine and how they feel if they go the opposite route, you can't speak on it. Right. You just can't because it's not, you can't judge somebody for saying for their food choices when it's not your body. Do you know what I'm saying? Yes. Yes. No. I mean, you know, she's working with her physician and Mm -hmm. they together have developed a plan and that's the frustrating thing while uh, there is so much beauty in social media and ability to connect with other people, you know, and learn. There's a lot of that too, right? right? There's a lot of, and I think it's confusing for women. I feel like I was fortunate, you know, however long it's been eight, nine years ago when I started this journey, that really social media wasn't that big. So I was able to read the information on my own and kind of dissect it and digest it and figure out my own plan. Mm -hmm. And so now I feel like every time you log on to the internet, it's like someone's telling you to eat, Mm -hmm. you know, to drink only raw milk that like almond milk and oat milk are bad. Okay. You should only be drinking raw milk. Uh, You should be eating, I don't know, like a pound of raw liver or something. I have no idea like what the latest thing is. And there's just so much conflicting Mm -hmm. information being thrown at people who already don't feel good. Right. And I know because I've been there, you know, because you're there and you literally do not have the energy to figure out, is this the right thing for me to do? Mm-hmm. And it's overwhelming and you feel like you're spinning your wheels. And so that's why I think it's important for people. While what you and I are just saying, you suit as medicine, we're not saying this is exactly what you should do because mm-hmm. everyone's journey is going to look different. Right. You know, everyone's journey, what you tolerate is different than what I tolerate. Like I don't tolerate much alcohol at all. Yeah, you right. do well, you know, you yeah. do well with cocktails. Yeah. So you just have to figure it out. It's a, it's a N equals one experiment. It's a trial and error thing. And for people to be critical of that journey when they're not living it. I, I agree with you. Like, don't, don't label this, can't come don't, into don't space don't label this something, something yeah. that it, that yeah. it's not right. right. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I'm glad you agree with me on that because I'm just going to have to know. <laughs> so it sounds like you cook a lot at home. I'd love to know some of your favorite foods and if you have any like advice or tips for folks, because I think like one of my main, like I spend 90% of my time trying to encourage and motivate people to have the energy and the willpower, which I don't even like to call it willpower because I think willpower doesn't stand up to I want to live a healthy, long, pain-free life. That is more powerful than any type of willpower you could ever have. I think it's about self-respect and it's about wanting better for yourself. And you can't want better for yourself if you don't know that it's possible. So we have to share that that it's possible and then encourage people to want to go after that. But a lot of people don't like to cook at home. They don't want to take time. They find it laborious. And so I'd love to know 
how you, what, what are some of the things you love to um, eat at home? And then how do you, how do you do it? Like without getting burnt out? So I will say, I do understand, right? I mean, you're working full time. You've got things to take care of. The last thing you want to do is cook a meal and clean a kitchen. So yeah. I am not you. And you now talked yeah. about this before. You, yeah. Laura cooks these beautiful, elaborate, gorgeous meals. And like <laughs> I was at her house and I asked for sparkling water and I was expecting her to show up with the can of like LaCroix because that's what I would do. I would just drink it hot out of the can and she serves it to me in this beautiful glass with this garnish. And I'm like, oh gosh, okay. Um, <laughs> that feels so fancy. Um, I pretty much eat, uh, it would be like bodybuilder-esque type meal prep. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. So I, I know it works for me and I eat some combination of protein, carbohydrate mm -hmm. and vegetable and yeah. mix and match whatever that looks like so I'll fit I'll fix steak I'll fix chicken um mm -hmm. been on a kick lately where I really like mahi and Walmart mm -hmm. Walmart has a fantastic frozen mahi it's delicious mm -hmm. and it's mm -hmm. cheap yeah. um, so I'll cook you know some protein and then I'll fix like a big thing of rice or sweet potatoes and then broccoli Mm -hmm. um, asparagus something like that and I just kind of mix and match so my meals are not sexy by mm -hmm. any stretch of the imagination but they check all the boxes that I need them to so they're so that's they're how you stay consistent is to keep it simple and just make what you know how to make and what you what you know exactly you and I am like I am a good cook and when mm -hmm. I want to I can fix nice meals but like my day-to-day -day, the lunches mm -hmm. I take with me to work mm -hmm it's simple. It's just yeah. that, you know, I eat, them, I eat them cold. I also don't use a microwave, so I eat everything yeah. cold. Okay. Yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. There's not a lot of alternative for grabbing a lunch out and about somewhere quickly. If you do work nine to five, it's really hard. So you, ha you have to take a lunch. You do. And so I, you know, I, I prep my breakfast like that. So pretty much that's, that would be my tip for people is like, use your days off wisely and use them to prepare because mm -hmm. otherwise you're going to be forced to do something you don't want to do. Mm -hmm. um, and I work in a rural area and I would venture to say that there would probably not be, I know there's nothing around me that I could eat. So like I travel. Yeah. there's nothing. Yeah. Um, so I travel with meat sticks I travel with um like some tangerines or something I take mm -hmm. I take filtered water with me yeah everywhere I go and it really is so small things that people say like oh it's not gonna hurt you know just this one time well that one time if you're not prepared becomes all the time and for me yeah. for me it's not worth it for me it's not and you're you're so right about self-respect people will ask me well oh how are you so disciplined like how do you not want this I'm like it's it literally you could give me like the most beautiful I don't know like donut or something I don't know I don't care and I literally don't care like I do there's no desire it's not about self-discipline I don't feel like I'm depriving myself I just don't want it so what what you have is what my ultimate goal for all of my clients and my 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 members and everybody that crossed my path you don't even have to buy a single thing for me you can just consume all of my free education and I still want this for you what you have is what I call true food freedom which means the food that you want to eat is synonymous with the food that you need to eat to live free of autoimmune flare-ups so it's not that I I'm restricting myself and I'm no it's when you get to a point in your journey where you feel so good and you've worked so hard to get to that point none of that other shit looks appetizing anymore because you want to continue on this path that you're on. You want to only get better. Right. I mean, when you've worked so damn hard to dig yourself out of the hole, why would you want to step back? Why would you want to, yeah, why, why would you, why would you intentionally hole? want to go back into the hole, you know? And also I have another perspective too, in that, you know, I work in healthcare, I work in a hospital. Mm -hmm. so I see how sick people are every single day. That's and another motivator for you. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, that's another motivator for me. And I, you know, I, I don't wish that anyone else could see that because it's, it's, it's terrible, but you don't want to end up there. And a lot of it is lifestyle choice. Mm -hmm. Not all of it, a right. lot of it. 
Well, what you see is the extreme side of it, but we all see it in our parents and our family members. You can go to the grocery store and you can see most of the people there are suffering with a lifestyle related condition, a diet and lifestyle related condition. You yes. can see it in people, you know? And um, wow, it, and it's, it's medications, you know, and then, right. and then come the medications. And if you think that this lifestyle is expensive, mm -hmm. try spending all your free time in doctor's offices. Right. And taking medications because that's ultimately where this, that road would lead. Absolutely. I love that you are so open and honest about this because, you know, it's for me to say it, I literally just said this to my sister because my sister finally joined the Flare Free Pantry Makeover mini course. And I was like, I'm so curious why you decided to join. And so she told me all the things. And then one day randomly, she texted me. She's like, oh my gosh, I'm going to go broke eating this food. And I thought, and I just said to her, I said, you pay now or you pay later? Because it's true. It's you either change. And here's the thing about the people that are, they can't wrap their brain around eating this way because it's more expensive. It's like I said earlier, you're going to end up not spending money on other things. And the, and through your journey, your the things that you care about and the things you love will change as well. And so you're not going to be going out to the bar and spending $200 on shots for everybody. And you're not going to be, you know, traveling to some crazy hotel that has this, you know, super expensive restaurant and it's all crap. You know what I'm saying? Like you're going to eventually spend your money differently and you'll have more money on groceries. <laughs> you will. Right. Right. And I, you know, I understand, you know, in this economy, like everything's yeah. expensive. Like I, you, we get it, you know, I get yeah. it, but my gosh, I mean, I would say what's a hospitalization. I mean, you're probably looking at Fifty thousand dollars. Mm -hmm. I mean, also have you know people have insurance, but <clears throat> it's not uncommon. Even I mean, with single, insurance, even so with expensive. insurance, there are single rounds of chemotherapy that cost thirty thousand dollars. Insane. Insane. You know, and so I just say control the controllables. Like you know, we can't control everything that happens to us, but we do get to eat good food, and you know, and even recently, like I've kind of had to make some adjustments, you know, to what I eat. Like, is everything I eat organic? Mm -hmm. No. And that's mostly because I don't live in an area that we, like you and I both, we don't yeah. have, we don't have a Whole Foods. We don't have a Trader Joe's. Yeah. So there's sometimes there's things I can't get. And so you just do the best you can. And yeah. honestly, you're going to feel so much better even eating not organic chicken, you know, not organic vegetables than what you did eating highly processed foods. And, you're going, and you're going to be more full. That's the other thing people forget. I'm like, if you eat, you know, an orange, you're going to yeah. be a lot more full, an orange and like a meat stick, you're going to be a lot more full than if you ate a bag of Doritos. Absolutely. And probably the cost is about the same. Absolutely. 100%. And not to mention, there's absolutely no nutrition in a bag of Doritos. So not only is it going to keep you fuller longer, but you're going to get vitamin C, you're going to get carotenoids, you're going to get protein, you're going to get you know, if, if you're getting grass-fed beef stick, which I know you are, you're going to get vitamin D and omega-3s and all these things. So the cost is actually, it's actually more beneficial, cost effective. If they, if they're the same price, you're getting more for your money. Does that make sense? Yeah. It's, you know, it's similar to, I don't like investing right in your retirement. Like you're not seeing the benefits now. Yes. Yes. It's going to come later. Yes going to come later exactly. this is an investment in you an investment in your future and my god I mean if you're contributing to your retirement account and you're yes. still eating like crap and you have autoimmunity you're probably not going to make it to enjoy that anyway right. so. oh my goodness oh my goodness that's so true and the thing about it is as well you will that investment will pay off in so for some people, two weeks, three weeks, four weeks, because you're going to feel drastically better. Yes. So you, you get the, you get the, the long-term investment, but you have a short-term investment there that's paying off as well. It's been quick, you know, even for some people that I've talked to, um, that even just cut out gluten yes. within the first week, they're like, wow, you know, like my eczema is better and my joints don't hurt as much. I'm like, see, See, I'm not, I'm not <laughs> crazy. I'm, I'm not, not crazy. crazy. Why would I lie to you? Why, what do I Why have to, I lie to you? Exactly. So that's what I tell them. Like, 
what actually do I have to gain from misleading you? Nothing. And I'm not trying to like invite you. I'm not trying to like coerce you to join my cult over here. (laughs) I mean, it's a great place to be, but, uh, (laughs) but yeah, like, and you have nothing to lose by changing, by changing what you eat. Right. You only have something to gain. You only have something to gain. Literally only has something to gain. It's not like, like you said, it's not like you're going out and buying an expensive device or whatever. You're just buying different groceries for a few weeks and seeing seeing what happens. Right. Absolutely. And the the changes are going to be good. They're going to be good. But that scares people too, I think. Because when you've been unwell for so long, there's also somewhat of an identity tied to that. Have you oh, that's true. Yeah. Oh, that's true. That's very true. Yeah. Interesting. That's an interesting thought. Cause I always felt like when I was, when I was like this last relapse that I had a couple of years ago, I was so like embarrassed to talk about how much pain I was in. I didn't want to be the burden. I didn't want to be that person that was always talking about how horrible they felt, but I could see how people get attention and they get love that way. And you know, the opposite being healthy, you kind of lose that attention and that, you know, that place. I could see that too. It's all very, you know, it's very complex, these things. And I'm so glad that you, know, you talked about trauma earlier. I'm so glad that like the emotional aspect is getting more attention to, mm-hmm. because like we said, stressful events tend to trigger, you know, these types of autoimmune conditions. It's trauma, you know, mm-hmm. and that's never going to be addressed by Pharmaceuticals. By, by, by pharmaceuticals or the healthcare system. Yeah. I mean, trauma won't even be addressed by food or by supplements. That is like something that, you know, that's a whole different thing, but yeah, that's, that's not my area of expertise, but there are people right. who, yeah, who have but cured that's autoimmunity. Why it's so important to surround yourself with people that are in this community and willing to share information about how to reverse the various, you know, triggers and try to do your best one little thing at a time, you know, like start with food. Food is a great place to start. Cause like you said, you got to eat three times a day. You already have to grocery shop and cook. You have to. Right. Right. Instead of talking about, you know, mold and heavy metals and all this stuff, it's, that's all great. And I think that comes, that came for me in time, right. Mm -hmm. Addressing Mm -hmm. those root causes. That was way on down the road. But the first thing, I think the thing that's easiest in my mind, personally, mm-hmm. in, my, in my opinion, my, the easiest thing to, to change is what you eat. And you'll see the quickest results because like detoxing from mold and heavy metals, you have to have a doctor's care. It, it takes a long time. You have to get testing. The testing is expensive. So way more expensive and time consuming and difficult than just, you know, switching to gluten-free bread or not eating hot dogs or whatever it is that you choose to do. And there's so many, and now even more so than when I started this journey, there's so many more options. When I first started this gluten-free, I mean, it was a thing, but they're really more like restaurants didn't have that many choices. And now I feel like almost everywhere you go, there's gluten-free options on the menu, you know, This is what I'm saying. Like, there's no place that you can go that you can't eat. Like I just, somebody just told me the other day, I live in Portland, Tennessee. Your mom lives here. There is a dang on little pizza plug pizza place. They have cauliflower crust and dairy-free cheese in Portland, Tennessee. So I can go and eat pizza and walk away like without any, no problems whatsoever. Um, Somebody just told me that Papa John's now has a gluten-free crust. So I'm telling you, there's nowhere that you can go that doesn't have something that you can't eat. And if, if you can't find a gluten dairy free pizza, you can eat a piece of chicken with the mashed potatoes and some broccoli and still enjoy a night out with your family and have a great time. You have to get past that morning phase, that initial morning phase when you're like, I'm not going to be able to eat cinnamon rolls and pizza and hot dogs or whatever it is that you like love and you can't eat anymore. Um, And then start to feel better. And then that becomes the motivation to continue. And then little by little, you're not going to mourn the things you couldn't eat anymore. And then if you have excellent recipes to follow and somebody to help you with which ingredients to buy, 
you can start to make those favorite foods flare-free as well. You can make cinnamon rolls. You can make pizza at home. Yeah, but you realize that the conventional cinnamon rolls and pizza and fast food and whatever is what got you to this point. Right. Right. Yeah. So that's, that's, and, and that's a hard pill to swallow. Right. Right. I, I went through that, that, wow, the choices that I made personally are kind of what got me in the situation to begin. Yeah, but it's not our fault because nobody ever taught us. Nobody said, right. hey, have this, this horrible cancer causing pizza at school. Nobody taught us that. They just fed it to us. Yeah. And it was everywhere. And that was the only option. You no, know, it was completely we can't normal. really blame ourselves for that. No, but you, you look back and you realize, you know, the, so like my choices did get me here, even though I didn't know better, but now I do know better. And so I can make better choices going forward. Exactly. I always say, you don't know what you don't know, but you can't unlearn what you learn. So once you learn that, like eating Papa John's pizza is inflammatory, <laughs> you can't unlearn that. So now all you can do is, okay, well, what are my anti-inflammatory pizza options? I'm going to seek that out. You know what I mean? Yeah. I literally had, it's, it's a beautiful thing. I had blaze pizza this afternoon after I mm -hmm. left the gym, I had a gluten-free vegan crust with some mm -hmm. red sauce. I got grilled chicken and all the vegetable toppings on it. No cheese. It was delicious. Yeah. It's awesome. amazing. You just have to, you just have to adapt. And a lot of this is mindset. It's mindset. It's mm -hmm. so much mindset. Yeah. Yeah, it's 90, 90, 95% of my work is teaching people to change their mindset around food because it, it has a lot of emotional attachment to it, right? It's at every single family holiday. It's at, um, you know, every single, like we have memories in our life just based around food. So right. it's very emotional. And how hard, you know, I don't know if you and I have talked about this before. I think we have, so my grandmother is 95, okay? So I have fantastic memories of her cooking like fried apple pies and fried chicken and all the things well how hard was it for me to tell a 97 year old granny granny I'm not eating that food anymore mm -hmm. she to this day does not understand <laughs> she still offers me the same food you know when I go to visit her um and yeah that's hard that's mm -hmm. realizing that, you know, here she is, she's not going to live probably, you know, much longer. She's almost a hundred years old and she's doing great, but still it's just life. Um, and that there was a, there was a moment where I had my last bite of her fried chicken, right? There was a moment where I had my last bite of that fried apple pie. I'm never going to get that again. Um, but also things are rarely as good as we remember them being you I know we've had that discussion before that like things, absolutely things tend to be better in our minds than what they actually are in reality mm -hmm. and also food is fuel and people are the celebration so just because you can't have grandma's pie doesn't mean you can't spend time and have memories with her anymore no and if if anything it removes a lot of the stress for me from those situations um, and being, and clearly communicating that too, right? So not waiting till the last moment to show up to Thanksgiving dinner and be like, well, I'm not eating any of this food. I mean, it doesn't need to be that dramatic, mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> you know, bring something you can eat, prepare eat your beef stick on the way, eat your beef stick on the way. Like you can, you're going to power through it, you know, eat some green beans or something that you know that you can yeah. bring a side dish and get bring your own dessert. Like yeah, I yeah. mean brownies. Don't tell anybody that they're gluten free and dairy free. Just bring brownies. Just bring and if brownies. Eat them, but you, you have brownies to eat. Exactly, exactly. So that that emotional aspect, that's it's hard. It's but intense. It's in, it's intense. And but the good news is, is that you're not alone. Like especially in Laura's community, you're surrounded by people who've been down that road before. And like, that's why it's so important. Like I had one member say, I never talked about my flares before because having an autoimmune condition is so isolating and it can be really lonely when you're the only person in your family. Like look, look at your grandmother. She's 95 and she can still eat fried chicken and fried pie. <laughs> yeah. I mean, and that just speaks to how we are all different. Mm -hmm. Grandma doesn't have the same genes as you or whatever it is. Maybe it's your epigenetics, right? You said that stress maybe flipped a switch for you. 
but we are not the same. I love you, Grammy, but I can't eat that. I can't eat it. I don't feel well when I eat that. And if you love me, you understand that. Yeah. And it's okay to grieve that too, because Mm -hmm. let's just be real. Like I've had moments, not anymore, um, but when I was first diagnosed and kind of entering this lifestyle, I would have pity parties. Like, Mm -hmm. why me? Like, why do I have to be the one that has Hashimoto's? Like, why do I have to be the one that can't just be normal? Yeah. Why can't I live in, you know, and I would look and I would see all these people and I'll be like, why do you get to like enjoy all this stuff? And here I am, like, I can't go do that. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. But that's, that's here. Like you've Mm -hmm. got, you've got to deal with that. And Mm -hmm. that's really not that uncommon. Right. But yeah, the jealousy, the it's, it's a great, it's, it's almost like grieving a death. Right. Right. Like you're Absolutely. grieving the death of your old your older life. self. Yeah. Yeah. But as you had said earlier, the new life with new life brings so many more new, beautiful things. Like yeah. you probably eat things that you never grew up eating. That in itself is amazing. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Um, Brussels sprouts. And I mean, there's all these delicious foods. I mean, I was a child of, and this is no fault of my parents. It's just how it is. I was a child of like the eighties and nineties. So mm-hmm. we were like fast food kids and macaroni and cheese kids. And mm-hmm. I don't know what else did we eat back then? Um, I don't even remember now what I used to eat, but yeah. you know, it was just what you did. And convenience that's what everyone, foods kind it was, of just like, yeah, convenience foods. So hamburger helpers and yes. rice aroni. And I'm trying to remember, you know, yes, all, <laughs> all that, that stuff, all that stuff. Um, but it's, not as good as what you remember. That's all I'm going to say. Oh my gosh. I know. <laughs> That's what I always say. Like your taste buds will evolve, you know? And so like what you used to love after you have been doing this for a while, you'll go back and taste it and be like, oh my God, I don't know why I love that so much. Yeah. yeah. It'll taste different. But it does. It opens the door to just so many more beautiful experiences and real food. I mean, there's a lot more real foods out there to try than there are nasty package things that aren't special so I was I was talking to somebody online recently and they were they had a client who I guess was asking them about cheat meals you know mm-hmm. and fast food and I thought what a strange concept that the cheat meal and like the treat that you want is literally the cheapest mm. nastiest least mm-hmm. least special thing that I can think of my gosh I mean there's a McDonald's on every single corner like it's not even that special. So basic. I mean, yeah. I mean if I was going to risk my health for something, you know, it would be like my grandmother's fried pot. Like if I'm going to yeah. risk it, it's yeah. going to be something yeah. worth risking it for, not something that yeah. I could get 24/7 365. Um, right. But trying new foods. Yeah, that's been um that's been a fantastic journey. Yeah. And that's um and making those foods too is so fun. I was going to say, yeah, that's something that you can do with your whole family. And it becomes, think about, okay, you're making a box of rice aroni or you're making hamburger helper. How long does that take to make? No time at all. This is not something we're going to sit around the stove and do together as family and talk about and make memories. You know, <laughs> that is not, but say, for example, you go out to the garden, you grab a bunch of zucchini and you're scooping out the seeds and you're making zucchini boats and you're making a sauce and you're putting it all together. That is something that you remember doing with your kids forever. Nobody's going to go, oh yeah, I, I love making rice aroni with my mom growing up. So no. there's, a whole, there's a whole world of experiences that you can have and new memories that you can make that will replace those old ones that maybe you initially mourn in the beginning. Right. Yeah. It's, it's a beautiful and, and sad and sad thing. It's like bittersweet, right? Yeah, bittersweet. Yeah. So let's talk about Walmart because I have what's called the Flare Free Pantry Makeover Mini Course, which is where I teach people what to buy, right? And where to find it and what the packages look like. So you can memorize those labels. So when you're in the store, you can see it quickly. You're not like, where do I, I don't know what to find, you know, because you're so used to buying the brands you normally shop for. So I have Walmart on the thing because um, it's like the closest grocery store here that sells a wide variety of organic stuff. Mm -hmm. growing up in Chicago, Walmart was like not the place to go. But now that we live in the South, it's like 
there's a Walmart everywhere and we live in a small town and it's only really the only big store that we have. So I shop at Walmart all the time. And so I, for anybody that's listening to this and turns their nose up at Walmart, don't skip forward, please listen, because they have so many good, they have grass fed beef, they have organic chicken, they have wild seafood, as you were saying. So I want to hear your opinion on Walmart and what you buy there and yeah, all the things. Okay. I love me some Walmart. Like I love their pickup. It's convenient. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, because I don't know the last time I must have put actually inside of grocery store, but when I, so in 20, I don't know, 2018, something like that, I was a whole 30 coach and okay. that's really when, and I feel like the whole 30 like program was really instrumental in getting more paleo, like healthier food options inside Walmart. Okay. So okay. They, they at one point had actual whole 30 meals that were, what's the Walmart brand? Is it Sam's choice? What's the, uh, I don't remember the name of it. Anyways, whatever yeah. the Walmart like store brand is, they actually had whole 30 like frozen meals for a temporary okay. period of time, just, oh, wow. at, just at Walmart. So I buy all the CHA things mm-hmm. at yep. Walmart love that they have all those sauce options. And it's cheaper than if you were to get it at Kroger or Publix, the same brand, same product, but cheaper. Like, so if you're on a budget yeah. and you don't have money to eat flare free shop at Walmart. Yeah. They have, like you were saying, a great supply of organic produce and mm-hmm. organic like fruits and vegetables. I get, um, my frozen vegetables there, mm-hmm. uh, frozen fruits there. I think what else oh I'm sure I'm forgetting a bunch of stuff they do have they have a brand called pop and bottle oh okay. which is uh they're like pre-made like uh coffees and organic okay. matcha drinks they're Ooh. made in they're made in almond milk I think is the base but they have okay. those there those are are those over by like the kombucha section then? Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. I'll look for that for sure. They have those there. What else do I get? What do you get? I mean, they have, they have vital farms, pastured eggs. You don't eat eggs. They have organic coconut milk. They have almond milk. Um, I mean, we pretty much will buy everything there. I'll tell you what they don't have. They don't have coconut aminos, at least mine. And this will vary based oh, yeah. on they don't have coconut aminos. They never have plain unsweetened vegan yogurt, but they have the sweetened ones. Um, there's one other thing I can't get there. The yellow bird hot sauces. I put that stuff on everything. I they like those. that there. And there might be one other thing, but other than that, I can get everything there. Oh yeah. Go ahead. I was going to read my list. Um, okay, go ahead. So they have something called strive biltong, which is like beef. Oh yeah. Yeah. Beef. Yeah. Oh my gosh. It's okay. like the South African style. Yes. yes. Yeah. It's ridiculously expensive. Okay. But yes. it's a huge bag. It's like thinly shaved. It's thinly shaved. And it's like, I don't know, 16 grams of protein in a serving. Yeah. It can yeah. be an actual meal. So I get strive biltong there. Yeah. I get the new primal, um, like chicken pizza, little snack sticks. Ooh, I get okay. those there. They also make one that's chicken and maple. I get primal kitchen ketchup and like dressings yeah. mm-hmm. there the pre-made guacamoles yes um nut pods they have nut oh, pods yeah. At yeah. Walmart. so I get nut pods we talked about siete and oh Sam's choice Sam's choice frozen wild caught mahi I am kind of a fish snob okay this fish is really really good and yeah. it's eight dollars and 97 cents for I don't know how many fillets are in there it's several it's like four or something right yeah for like nine bucks and my most recent Walmart discovery okay that I'm really proud of (laughs) is so I don't really like pork much um yeah butterball turkey breakfast sausage patties Mm -hmm. they're not organic they're not what's the thing it's (laughs) butterball it's butterball okay it's butterball but but they taste just like what I remember a McDonald's sausage patty tasting like. Okay. <laughs> so that's my thing. If they, you buy anything, buy the butter. I love that. But the pharmacist told me to buy this, you know, <laughs> not organic, whatever, you know, turkey <laughs> sausage patties. But the ingredients, and they're pre-cooked, so they're easy to like, I put 
put them in sure. air So the ingredients are turkey, water, 2% or less of salt, spices, sugar, rosemary extract, citric acid, and vinegar. Amazing. Amazing. Like, that's clean. I would have never thought, right? Wow. Fascinating. So, so that's my Walmart list. I love that. Yeah. So um, my Walmart also has the Daya pizzas, which are gluten-free and vegan. So it's like, if you know what to look for, you can find it anywhere. And if you're on a budget, highly suggest shopping at your local Walmart, see what they have, get all the clean stuff there, and then um, go to your other grocery store and fill it, fill out your order. Yeah. I, there's rarely a time. There are a few items that I can't get at Walmart. There's the Califia now makes yeah. an organic almond milk that mm -hmm. pretty much rivals malk. Okay. So I saw it's it like, at Publix the other day. It's so good, but the only place here that has it is Kroger. So, okay. so that's kind of the thing, I guess, with eating flare free that we yeah. might as well say is that you might have to shop around. Yeah. You might not be able to get everything at one grocery store unless you live like in a larger city, you know, and you have sure. Whole Foods or something. But Walmart is killing it. Like and this is Walmart. why I highly suggest and Aldi too, but yes, yes. And this is why I highly suggest folks do not physically go to the grocery store because not only like, say you, you get the list of ingredients for my flare free pantry makeover mini course, you have the list in front of you. You just type in the name and then you see the product. It matches the picture. Boom, you order it. And now you're not running all around spending hours trying to find stuff. And then also wasting gas, trying to get to different grocery stores, like make your life easy, order your groceries, follow the list. And yeah. you don't have to take my course and use my list. I'm sure there are other people out there, but take some help, but, you know, that's going to help you get started. Simpler. Take some help. Yeah. And then that way too, when you're new and you're starting this, you're not in the grocery store. So you're not tempted by yes. whatever's in there. Yeah. Whatever's in there that you don't need. Oh, well, my kids love Oreos. So I'll just get Oreos. If there are Oreos in the house, you're going to eat those Oreos too. So you have to get to a point where you're, oh. you stop buying stuff that is going to make you flare because you will eat it if it's there. You want to talk about Oreos? <laughs> have you had have you had the Simple Mills chocolate cookies that are like Oreos? You like those? I like them. Really? They're yes. one of my least favorite recent purchases. I was going to do a reel on them, but I haven't done that yet. Okay, well, my husband, my like husband them. and my daughter both enjoyed them. I found them to be under under sweet, which normally I don't like sweet things, but I was excited because I was like, okay, this is going to be like an Oreo, the one with the cashew butter on the inside. Yeah. Well, there's yeah. like peanut butter ones and then there's like the chocolate ones. Yeah. Okay. We got the cashew butter on the inside and it was chocolate on the outside. I just thought it needed to be sweeter and it was nothing like an Oreo. <laughs> well, it's been a long I time. Will say, I will one. say I felt great after eating them. I was like, it, this did the trick. And I didn't like, if you get like a gluten-free Oreo, you'll feel like shit afterwards. Yeah. I mean, it's not something I eat often, but yeah, yeah. I, did, I did enjoy it. I'm glad yeah. you did. My husband and my daughter liked it too. Isn't that funny? It's, yeah, it is funny. But I love to just keep like dark chocolate in the fridge, you know, and I can eat that and be completely oh. satisfied or like Walmart or something. Walmart carries huge chocolate. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'm telling you, there's like nothing you can't get at Walmart. Like you can start there and then, and, it, you and that's, ex that's accessible, you know, for most people, like you were yeah. saying, I mean, if you live in a yeah. small town, most people have Walmart. I mean, I've been on road trips, you know, and made a pit stop instead of eating. Yeah. Okay. We'll talk about this. Yeah. I'm on the road. Usually I take a cooler, I have a cooler in the back of my car mm -hmm. because I'm yeah. real over the top about everything. Mm -hmm. um, I usually pack my own stuff, but if I'm on the road, okay. Instead of stopping and getting food at like a fast food restaurant or somewhere, go in the grocery store, get, a, get, get some like Applegate turkey slices, yes. you know, get some siete tortillas, some yep. guacamole, some salsa, boom. You have a meal. You I mean, you meal. saw the other day, I was like, oh, I was battling between like, should I stop and get like a Jimmy John's like you know, lettuce wrap, or should I just continue driving? Cause there was a lot of traffic. So I was like, I'm going to get gas and I'm going to pick up some stuff from the gas station. So I got boiled eggs, some pickles. Um, I think I got a beef stick. Oh no, I got like pepperoni that was wrapped with cheese. So cheese wrapped with pepperoni and then some nuts or something. And that was my dinner. And it's like, 
again, if you know what to look for, you can find it anywhere, even in a gas station, you can find stuff that you can have. And it's going to be satisfying, especially if you focus on high protein stuff. Like if you just go in and get a bag of popcorn, <laughs> you're, you're going to be hungry in 30 minutes. Right. So you're just changing your mindset. So instead of going in and grabbing a Snickers and yes. a soft drink, right? Yeah. You're going in and you're grabbing a meat stick and some yeah. like boiled eggs and a lot of a banana at now. the counter, whatever. Hey, yeah. A lot of them even have fruit now. Like I know like the loves, exactly. on, they yeah. even have, they have fresh cut fruit. They'll have pineapple. They'll have cantaloupe. Yes. So you can make it work. Absolutely. A lot of places even have hummus and stuff like at gas stations. Like there's so many things you can, you can do nowadays. It's not like when you and I were first starting at all. No, but I recommend, you know, if you're just starting this journey, don't wing it. Like right. the, wing, the winging it needs to come <clears throat> later because winging it can be a little bit stressful, I think initially, but so at first, and I do try to be, be prepared, but sometimes life happens and you can't be, yeah. so you just got to roll with it. That's true. Yeah. And if, 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 if meal prepping and like packing a cooler before you go on a camping trip or whatever is going to stress you out next time, try next time. Like, cause stress will cause way more inflammation than, you know, whatever you decide to eat. It, it just will, because we have so much stress from a variety of different back ways coming at us that I find it's, stress was the hardest thing for me to manage. It was. Mm -hmm. Like food, I changed it in a heartbeat. I felt better in three months. I was like, this is easy. But for me to start saying no to people, to cut out the toxic, you know, life suckers from my life and to start saying no to money-making opportunities, like that's great. However, <laughs> I'm going to say no to that because I'm, I'm stretched thin and no, or whatever, you know, that is so hard. It is hard. And I think you're, you're exactly right. You know, eating something maybe less than ideal from a place of like gratitude and positivity is a mm -hmm. lot, is a lot less harmful to you than stressing over like it being perfect. Right. Yeah. I mean, I, my mom had that conversation with me um, when I first, well, actually when I, when I was like, I was a few years into this journey and she's like, you know, your body can handle more than you think. Mm. Yeah. She's like she everything like you're you doing. Can. Is setting you up to be resilient. Like you, you can handle this. Right. Especially when you get to a point where you've gotten the inflammation so low, you can, like I said, like, what did I have the other day? It was the day after it was the day my daughter had, um, her first standardized test. I surprised her with a McDonald's, um, like McFlurry thing. Oh, and I got one for myself with M&Ms because I was like, oh, they have one with M&Ms because normally I think of McFlurry and I think of Oreo. So I got myself a McFlurry and like, I had a great time eating it. I loved it. It was so fun. And then I didn't have a reaction because like, you know, I, I eat so well on a daily basis. I can have a little bit of ice cream and not flare up. And and I, like I said, I enjoyed it. I wasn't eating it like, oh, I shouldn't be doing this. I'm so bad. I'm making a poor choice. Like I just enjoyed it. I was like, actually, this is fun. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, I just think about that. I'm like, think about all the people who do this on a daily basis. Yeah. Like, yeah. is it ideal? No, but are they still up and like alive? Yeah. So it is you so fascinating to me how people, how long they can go feeling like crap, but they don't know that there's another way to feel. They don't know that it's possible to, you know, bend down to pick something up and not have your knees hurt or not have constant back pain. Or, you know, my mom, her hands used to like swell up if she ate certain things and she would always go, oh, I ate too much sodium. And I'm like, now I, I realize that that was inflammation. Yeah. Her hands would get inflamed after eating certain things. So she was eating something she, that didn't agree with her, you know, but we don't know what we don't know. No. And our culture, the reason I have a job is our <laughs> culture, our culture is not to listen to those subtle symptoms. Like I have a headache or, you know, my hands are kind of sore or um, I didn't go to the bathroom today. I didn't go to the bathroom. I haven't been to the bathroom in a week. So, Hmm. Well, I guess I'll just take some, you know, ibuprofen for my headache not paying attention to like, oh, maybe I need to drink some water or maybe I'm dehydrated. Right. Um, right. I'll take some ibuprofen for, you know, my hands hurting. I'll take, mm. you know, 
I'll take this Imodium because I have chronic diarrhea and I can't get mm. to stop. Or I'll just take this Miralax every day because I'm not going to the bathroom. So that's another perspective that has to change is that you have to kind of listen to your body and not want to squash the symptoms mm. all the time. That's why I love if I do, if I do eat something that causes me inflammation, I love to not take anything for it because I want to know, okay, I want to be able to like reverse it in real time yeah, so that I can know that that's my guess was that was what I needed. Does that make sense? So if I do have a headache coming on, I'll be like, okay, I need to drink more water instead of taking a pill or taking magnesium. I'll just see, okay, let me take Let me take a bunch of water. Let me slam some water and check back in with myself in a few hours. If it doesn't go away, then I might pop some magnesium or whatever, you know, maybe I need something else. But if you just constantly mask the symptom of whatever it is, you're never going to be able to identify number one, how bad it truly is until it's so bad that Tylenol isn't working anymore. Mm-hmm. And number two, you're never going to be able to get to the root cause because you don't know how long have I had a headache? I have no idea. I just take medicine and it goes away, but then I chronically have headaches. Right. And you brought up a great point when you said, no, I don't take magnesium or like medication because what I've found, and I've been guilty of this too. So this is not, I'm not being critical. Is what I found in like the wellness space is that we tend to just supplement like we did medications. Right. Right. It's very easy for us to fall into that, that kind of, what is it called? They call it like green pharmacy or something where you're essentially just replacing the medications you used to take with a bunch of supplements and really, is that any different? It's a lot more expensive. It's a lot more expensive. It's Mm -hmm. a lot more expensive and supplements have their place, but you cannot out supplement a A bad diet. diet. You can't can't do it. Supplement stress. You can't out supplement trauma. (laughs) If if I could have done it. And that's, I, I posted that recently. If I could have bought my way, out of Hashimoto's, I would have already done it. Mm-hmm. I don't mm-hmm. even want to sit down and add up the amount of money yeah. I have spent on yeah. supplements and supplements all the things and and all the things. And really, I my my life is simple now. Like my supplement regimen is probably the simplest it's ever been. My workout regimen is probably the most stringent it's ever been. And my food is kind of the same, but I feel better than I ever have. Mm-hmm. And I'm not taking 27. Tons of stuff all the 27. time. Right. So I'm the same the way. Same, when I, beauty I'm the same exact simplicity. way. Yeah. Exactly. When I had my relapse a couple of years ago, I was taking supplements like they were candy all day, every day. There was nothing I could do to get better. And now I take no supplements. Like the, the, the supplements I take are like when I'm doing a parasite cleanse or something, which I hate because I'm like, I'm so sick and tired of taking pills. Like I don't want to take pills all day long, but I have to. So I'm like, I'm going to do this parasite cleanse and get it over with, you know, but no, you're absolutely right. If you're taking fish oil every day, if you're having to take magnesium every night, if you're all of these things, it should be maybe once in a while, like as needed, if you can't fix it another way. Yeah. In my right. opinion. And that's, and that's finding out, you know, what you can't fix and then using right. the this supplement in its place. So do I still take the multivitamin? Yes. Do, are they sure. frowned upon sure. right now? Yeah. Absolutely. They are because everybody thinks that you should be getting everything you need from yeah. raw beef or something. I, I don't know. Um, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. But you've, and you've got to just quiet the noise, I think, and figure out what works best for you and not. And it, it may take you a year or two to get through that point, especially if you're under the care of a practitioner that is prescribing you supplements. That's not what we're talking about here. No, we're talking no. about when you get to that, I'm able to manage my symptoms on my own and listen to my body and give it what it needs. Maybe not reaching for a supplement or, you know, over the counter medicine first and trying to figure out what's causing it. Well, and not, self, and not self-prescribing. Right. I, see, yeah. I see so many people buy you know whatever supplement they see like so and so using online yeah. and I'm like yeah you know that's that's you great. don't know if you need it yeah you don't know if you need it and I'm not one to say that you need a doctor to tell you what you need okay because a lot of sure. what you are talking about 
and this is about empowerment and about knowing your body. But there, there is a time, I think, when you're first beginning that having some structure mm-hmm. about working with a practitioner, you know, whether it's with you, like through food or whether you're working yeah. with a functional medicine provider, that's, that's a good thing. That's a good thing to have. Yeah. Especially because I think a lot of times in the beginning, when folks are getting their diagnosis, if they're working with a functional medical provider, they're going to get the added diagnosis of you do have heavy metal toxicity or you have leaky gut or whatever. So you're probably going to be on a bunch of stuff in the beginning, but later down the line, you should really be able to, like you said, like maybe multivitamin, maybe you're taking vitamin D, maybe you're taking vitamin C, whatever you take, like as a daily kind of maintenance. Um, but other than that, you should be able to get everything that you need theoretically from your food. Um, and you know, there's a lot of research that shows our food is not as nutrient dense as it used to be and our soil health and all that totally different topic, but I think in general, you should, unless you're treating something, you know, acutely like this week, for some reason, I was like hit. I don't know if I had a cold or if I had allergies. I don't know what it was, but it was like a lot of snot and it was just a lot of really nasty. So what did I do? I started taking my vitamin C and my quercetin Mm -hmm. and my knack. Yeah. Elderberry. Yeah. It it went away and I stopped all of that. So exactly. It's great to have those things in your arsenal and I think the whole, the beauty of having an autoimmune condition is learning to listen to your body and knowing Mm -hmm. what it, what it needs because you've been forced, you've been forced. Like I would never, and I don't, probably none of us, would you have ever chosen to live like this? No, no. But do I think that I'm better off for it? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. It's so funny. I say the same exact thing. Like I and we don't talk about this enough. We don't say I'm grateful for it or it the blessing of an autoimmune condition, but it's true. I'm grateful that I have rheumatoid arthritis because if my body wasn't screaming at me in that way to say, listen, something's got to change now, I'd probably end up with cancer by the age of 50. Do you know what I'm saying? Like that was, that was my blessing in disguise. It is. And it's hard to see. It's definitely hard to see at the time, but <laughs> you know, now that I'm, you know, 10 years or whatever I am uh, from it, it's like, okay, okay. I I see why I had to experience this. And it's also, I think for you and me and others like to help other people because we've been down this path, we've been down this road. And if I can keep my goal would be for young women to never have to go through this. Right. Right. For your daughter to never have to experience what we've been through. Absolutely. First of all, healed people heal people because we want to help other people get to where we are today because it was so transformative and life-changing. And secondly, for anybody that buys themselves and cooks themselves flare-free and buys something completely different for their kids and cooks completely differently for their kids, I hate to say it, and it may not be true, but chances of your child developing the same or a similar autoimmune condition as you, if they don't change their diet as well, is so high. I don't want my daughter to ever, ever go through what I went through. Why would I want that? So yeah, I do make her eat what we eat. I'm sorry. I'm that parent. I'm not going to be the whole, like, you can have dessert with your dinner. No, if you have an eating disorder, go ahead, please. Because I don't want your kid to get an eating disorder too. Please teach them that. But my kid is not having dessert until she eats her meal. Like she has it. I tell her all the time nutrients first. Sorry, honey. And I don't say good food first that no, I'm not trying to like demonize dessert, but she has to have her nutrients first bottom line period. Right. Teaching her her good, good habits. She's going to carry that into adulthood. And as she grows and she goes out and she tries foods and has hangs out with her friends and eats things that they're eating, she's going to realize Oh, mom was right. Like this doesn't make my tummy feel good. You know, this doesn't make me feel good, mom. Like, Mm -hmm. what is that? Right. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. I I agree with you that if we can just keep this next generation and another, other thing I'm passionate about is uh, young girls on birth control, but that's a whole other discussion. (laughs) Yeah. Um, Yeah, yeah, if, If we can keep these younger women healthy, I mean, wow. What an accomplishment. How impactful that would be. Yeah an accomplishment that's true mm-hmm. that's true feminism that's true like women's empowerment is to have a generation right. of women who are 
are healthy and vibe well and well yeah yeah, yeah and able yeah. to take and able to take the world by storm right because we don't feel yeah, like how can you <laughs> go out there and do everything you want to do if you're sick you can't and, yeah so we're yeah. actually in that sense kind of holding people back you're absolutely right we're yeah and our, future our children, generations back and not just and not just our girls but like future generations because you talked about like the food in schools oh yeah like what are we well in sperm count is down as well so this affects men in a very real way yeah i mean fertility have you read that book god's chain of swan countdown no. okay yeah it's fantastic she talks about you know all the we the odds are stacked against us right we haven't even talked about environmental toxins i was just <laughs> <laughs> yeah but can you control that? Right. That's not, what not, I love not directly. Said, control like, not the directly. controllables. I love that you said that. Control the controllables because we can't control the air we breathe outside or the fact that glyphosate is being sprayed in our little farm town or, you know, the fact that whatever it is that we're coming into contact with, you know, hundreds of different chemicals we come into contact every day. But we can control the cleaning solutions we use. We can control the makeup we put on our face. We can control the water that we drink at home. We can control the air quality in our home. There are certain things that we can control. It is our duty if we want to be well and if we want our kids to be well to control those things, at least to the best of our ability, but not in an over obsessive detrimental way. <laughs> right. And I mean, is it, is it ridiculous that we have to even think about these things insane yeah it is it's insanity you know that we live in america and we should have access to clean water and clean air and healthy food but the fact of the matter is that that's not this that's not the case right right we're being inundated every single day when we step outside of our homes so we have to take corrective especially those of us with autoimmunity because we tend to be the canaries in the coal mine right we tend to be a little more sensitive so we really have to take proactive steps to, to keep ourselves well. Absolutely. Wow. And the best way to start is through food. I love it. This is such an incredible conversation. Like what? Oh my gosh. I love you. Oh, you I just seem to like, we just sit down with some coffee and just chat like girls. Yeah. <laughs> I can't wait to meet your mom. I hope she comes to um, one of our events coming up. That would be awesome. Yes. Laura has the best events at her house. So just, <laughs> and to be, and I think that's really valuable for anyone who's in the area, if you don't have her, but to find a community like that is so, so healing. Mm. I can't describe how, I mean, that gets me emotional. Like when I think about just the people that I'm surrounded with just because of this journey. Yeah. That's, that's where it's beautiful. at. It's yeah. a beautiful thing. And just whatever you, whatever you're leaving behind in your old life, just know. It's it will okay. come back tenfold. Yeah. It will come back tenfold. I think for me personally, because I'm very selective with like who I follow on social media and what I consume, I find that social media is beautiful in that way because you can easily create community with the click of a button. And I, my number one suggestion to folks when they start is follow functional medical providers that you like and trust that you like the way they are and the way they teach follow them and every day you'll learn something new a little tidbit about oh maybe I should get an air filter when I can afford it maybe I should get a water filter maybe I should go gluten-free whatever it is these little tidbits will save your life over time and that becomes your community community of autoimmune wellness warriors and functional medical providers and people that are interested and invested in your in your wellness, in your success. In yeah, you know, it's funny that you say that. Um, I have like all these, I call them like my internet friends, but seriously, some of my best, I think I met you. I think we met through Instagram, right? Yeah, the first time I met you was when you came to my house for that party. <laughs> yeah, but I, felt like, but I already felt like I knew you. Yeah. But, so that is, that's a great point that some of the people that I'm really the closest with, and I think that get me the most are yeah. people I've never met. <laughs> Yeah, we're in real life as as crazy as that sounds. Um, I know, but do what you, do what you got to do. Like your you know, people I, will find you. Absolutely. I just yesterday we had a um, a day retreat and a cooking class thing, 
And one of the people said that it, how sad it is that we're disconnected. And I'm like, I don't, I've never felt so connected with people that with like-minded people in my entire life. Being at college, being in high school, I was never really around people that I felt like truly got me. And that, do you know what I mean? It's like you have these kind of forced relationships based on proximity. Mm-hmm. And now proximity doesn't matter. You could be in Australia and we could be like this because we think the same way and we support each other and whatever. You know, I feel like I don't feel sad that I don't hang out with all of these people because a lot of times the people that I spent the most time being around weren't the best people for me, if that makes sense. It does. It does. And you're you're totally right that that community is out there and waiting and we didn't have that, but now, but now it's there and people are more, I think more than ever really outspoken. Mm -hmm. And you also have to be kind of willing to along this journey. I think what comes with it is like to kind of fly your freak flag and just be who you really are Yeah, because your hand's been forced. Like you've, you've got to get raw and you've got to get real. Mm -hmm. And as a result of that, you're going to find people who are authentic and that you can connect with. And it's on a different level than, like you said, the people that you just you work with them and you're friends mm-hmm. with them just because you're at work, right? But do they really, right. you? I mean, do I disclose everything that I really think to people that I work with? I don't, right. I don't. Um, but I can be real with you. And yeah. <laughs> so. yeah, there's a safety there right there it's like a safe space when you're surrounded by people that number one know what you're going through have been through what you've been through and are going where you're going (laughs) it's like so beautiful that's the important part that are going where you're going and that you're going to go on this journey together and help each other along the way wow well I'm so glad that you're here on my journey I'm so glad that we met this has been just an absolutely wonderful conversation Everybody is going to eat this episode up. Thank you so much for joining me. And I look forward to hanging out with you on the internet some more. (laughs) Yeah, we'll we'll hang out again soon. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining me for another episode of Edible Rx, the podcast that teaches autoimmune warriors to use anti-inflammatory food as medicine. I hope you really enjoyed this conversation today. If you did, please reach out to the Fed Up Pharmacist on Instagram, follow her, hit her up in the DMs with any questions you have. Um, And definitely stay tuned for more conversations like this. Until next time, guys, eat your damn vegetables. Bye.